I once read a piece by Marlene Adler Marx, uh, an amazing writer and columnist for the Los Angeles Jewish Journal, where Rabbi Levy and I have both lived. I don't know if she's still writing, but her column was written tongue in cheek, and yet I think that it says something that's worth thinking about as we close the High Holy Days with this final service of Yisker. Here's what she wrote. My friend Jane and I met for dinner last week and we had a good laugh about death. We were discussing the upcoming elections and in an offhand way what my husband might have made of the candidates and ballot propositions were he still among us. I said, it's amazing that he's still dead without quite knowing what I meant. Simultaneously, Jane and I let out a roar, a yipes of astonishment, as people do when they touch something hot or come too close to what Kabbalists call the Sitra Atra, the other side. It's a boar, isn't it, Jane said, rising to the occasion. Still dead after all this time. Jane's father, Harold, is still dead too. He died years ago of a painful illness. He was a large, strapping football player who exuded robust physicality and wisdom. One of those men who add extra wattage to the Earth's light. It's impossible that he's really gone, she said. I want to say to my father, enough already. I've learned to live without you. I'm not mourning anymore. It's safe for you to come back. It's yet another yurt site, Marlene adds. This one is number 11. And strangely, I too feel safe. The brutal purple blossoms of the tree in our yard no longer assault my eyesight as they did years ago, right after the funeral. Our daughter, Samantha, has burst out of childhood and is driving a car. The icicles of loss don't shiver down my grieving back as much anymore. And my husband, Burton himself, is ancient history. He died just before the advent of social media even if he was among the first to own a car phone. We are living in two different worlds, he and I, the before and the after. The dead don't grow or expand their horizons, you know, but they do call to us in their own time. And in our case, each May at his yurt site, death comes for a visit. visit. Burton's yurt site always falls around Mother's Day. The conjoining of the two by now is natural to me. Each year I try to choose which to honor, birth or death. But inevitably, the two come together in the mixed bag, which is life. That last Mother's Day, Bert called our cousin Willie from the hospital and had Willie buy me a necklace of jeweled hearts. I sat with Burton on his narrow bed. The hearts stared up threateningly to me. Two days later, Burton was gone, and my life as a single mother began. But death has always been present at my family's Mother's Day. She continues later in the article. When I was a child, my mother spent the day in a kind of mournful haze, recalling her own mom, who had died when my mom was 12. My mom felt cheated, and there was nothing I could do to make up for it. Death sat at our breakfast table where my brother and I served our mother homemade pancakes. She was appreciative, but distant, dead, my mother was probably thinking still dead. We spend a lifetime building a network of comfort and stability 
with parents, siblings, children, friends, doomed to fervid mourning when they're gone. The reward for loving well is grieving well. The cost of weaving is in the tear. We live in the here and now. But the Sitra Atra, the other side, is always close by. We stand in the shadow of those who are still, still dead. Our modern world, of course, is notoriously uncomfortable about death, but not for Jews. The washing of the body, the sitting with the corpse, the acknowledgement that this will be our lot too, life will end. And this yisker, four times a year, society suppresses the truth of death, even if it comes out obsessively and inopportunely, as we saw with public wailing over the death of the One Direction pop star, singer, who died suddenly last week. I think Marlene Adler Marx is right. There is a wall between the dead and the living. Once they're dead, they are never the same. They don't know about email or the other things about which we know that may have been invented before their time. They don't know the recent polls for the election. We live on two different planes, the before and the after, and there can be no denying this hard fact. They're still dead and will be after all these years on earth. But nevertheless, a couple times a year, maybe even every day in your life, they can come back and visit with us by the light of this Yortzite candle that flickers and burns, the ones in our homes too. They can illuminate our kitchens and our souls. For one night and one day, they can be present in our homes and our hearts. And four times a year, including this morning's Yisker, they can be in our consciousness when we look at this Yortzite light, when we say El Male in the words of Kaddish, we said on that day when they were buried, when we realized that we have reached another season in our lives since then. They can come back for a mini reunion with us and we can think about how we have changed, what we have done, who we have become since we lit this candle last and since their deaths. And by dedicating this last official day of the high holidays to them, in closing, we can do one more thing. We can teach each other and those who come after us what lasts and what doesn't. It's amazing that he's still dead after all these years, Marlene Adler Marx said to her friend that day in a restaurant. It's so true. It's hard to believe that those whom he loves so much, as Rabbi Levi said, are really gone. But even more amazing than that is that they're still alive after all these years. Whenever we open our minds and hearts to their presence, whenever we light a candle in their honor, whenever we stop and pay attention and honor them, as we do now on page 583 together. If you'll read with me. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we remember them. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we remember them. In the opening of buds and in the rebirth of spring, we remember them. In the blueness of the sky and in the warmth of summer, we remember them. In the rustling of the leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we remember them. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. When we have joys we yearn to share, we remember them. 
so long as they live, we too shall live, for they are now a part of us as we remember them, and as we remember them with Psalm 121 on page 577, Rabbi Lee.